quite insightful because it sort of speaks to this duality uh, and multiplicity of identities that you, you talk about. Because again, um, in the beginning, Boko Haram uh, tried to set neighbor against neighbor, deliberately targeting churches and um, Christians until you know it became a free for all. And you spoke about your experience growing up, where as a Christian child, you take a piece of chicken yeah. and take it to a mother. To the mother. So that slaughter. they will slaughter it, making it halal, so that your Muslim neighbors yeah. would be comfortable about coming to your house and actually eating. Yeah, exactly. And, 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 and these were the relationships that existed, which yeah. people sometimes, when they look at the the fault lines that now exist, don't realize um, they exist. How significant do you think? that history is, and especially as we look to how to heal and move forward. Yeah, I, I was trying to link that time, you know, that kind of idyllic moment in our history in the 70s, after Kodoji, everybody was comfortable, there was money, people were not like tense, um, because some of the drivers of the conflict is, you know, economical, political, and of course ideological as well. But to go back to what you say, that time, what I remember is how I live in this tenement house with the only Christian family, all the others were Muslims. And every salah, you know, there will be these dishes of food, you know, that they will bring to us. And every Christmas, we we'll also kind of send food to them. It was just like that. There was no mention of um, what religion you are. It's not very important, you know, but gradually, you begin to see the change, the fault lines begin to develop. How do we go back to healing? I don't know, but I think what this tragedy has done for us is that we cannot afford to continue in this way, you know? And um, there's a limit to what religion can do, you know? Um, at the bottom, like we're all human beings. And I think that when you see a Christian being killed next to a Muslim, there was, there was no distinction, there is no distinction between the victims, basically they just kill, for killing sake. So there is that realization, I think, we have reached that point where we have a commonality of interests, of self-preservation, and that's a starting point. We go from there. Basically, we want to oppose this thing that's killing us, whether we're Christians or Muslims. Okay. Now, on the repeat of religion, because again and again, 